Hello and welcome to another Board Crazy Review. My name is Dee. I am joined as ever by... You're joined by the Incredible Bulk. That's actually I, not bad. I, I am Will. <laughs> just turns purple and <laughs> obese. And beast. Uh, so before we start talking about the game, we're going to run a little introduction to it from our gameplay video, if you haven't seen that yet. Just to give you a little uh, rundown of kind of how the game works. Yeah, the to our understanding. A, a gist of it, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not super thorough, but it'll give you a little bit of an idea. So uh, here that goes. There should be a time list that you can skip to if you don't have any interest in watching that. Marvel Champions the Card Game is a game for one to four players designed by Michael Boggs, Nate French, and Caleb Grace, and published by Fantasy Flight Games. In this living card game, players take control of well-known Marvel heroes and must work together in order to defeat a villain who is trying to complete an evil scheme. To begin, each player chooses the hero they wish to use and take their identity card. Each identity card is double-sided, with one side depicting their alter ego form and the other side depicting their hero form. These identity cards also show the players their starting and maximum hit points and hand limits. In addition to their identity cards, players build and use decks of between 40 and 50 cards. Decks are comprised of all cards associated with the chosen hero, as well as a combination of basic cards and cards from one aspect type of the player's choice. There are four aspect types in total, and each one favors a different playstyle. The rulebook suggests core scenarios for the included villains, including which cards to use in their encounter decks. Villains also come with schemes, and they also come in multiple forms, meaning they will get more difficult to defeat as the game progresses. Every round is comprised of a player phase, followed by a villain phase. Players take their entire turns one at a time, and on a player's turn, they may perform as many actions as they're able to. Most actions, like playing and using cards or triggering actions and events, can be done repeatedly and in any order. Cards have resource costs, which must be paid in order to be played. This is done by discarding other cards from your hand, each of which shows a resource value in its bottom left corner. Unless a specific resource is required, any combination of resources may be used as payment. Cards in play are simply exhausted once they're used and are only readied again once all players have taken their turns. The only action with a limit is the flipping over of the identity card to its other side. This may only be done once per turn. The two sides come with different actions, and they also dictate what the villain will do during the villain phase. At the start of each villain phase, the villain automatically generates threat towards their current scheme, and then activates against each hero once in order. If the player's identity card is on the alter ego side, the villain and any engaged minions will scheme again. If the identity card is on the hero side, the villain and any minions will attack and deal damage to that hero. Once this is done, each player draws and reveals a card from the villain's encounter deck, and they're resolved one at a time in turn order. Once these encounter cards are resolved, the round ends and the first player token is passed to the next player in turn order. If a hero is reduced to zero hit points, they are removed from the game, and if all heroes are reduced to zero hit points, the players lose. The players will also lose if the villain is able to generate enough threat on their main scheme. However, if the heroes are able to reduce the villain's final form to zero hit points before any of those things happen, then they win the game. Okay, so now people know this is a card game. It is indeed a, a living, living card. card game. Yes. All right, fine. You just steal my thunder, or I stole yours. Let's talk about Marvel Champions, Will. Yes. What we like, what we don't like. Let's start. Right. What, so do you have, I what, think what do you want to start? This game at its best. Yes. Feels. I mean, it, it's going to be up to the player. They're going to have to, you know, meet the game halfway somewhat. But I feel like at its best, it actually does feel like you are controlling one of these heroes in a fight against a supervillain. For sure. Yeah. Like the you the way that the, the different. Is that the cards allow you to sort of build the character yeah. based around like their powers and you know their suits or whatever it is that they're they have. Everyone plays kind of differently. Yeah. Uh, you know they have their strengths and weaknesses. I, I just I don't know. It's, it's sort of immersion and theme and like look. I think it's an outstanding product. To get more specific, I, I think um, the the way for me that I felt like a superhero was that was through the mechanic of. You're trying to attack the villain while they're also trying to carry out their scheme. Mm -hmm. Just so it felt like a yeah. film or yes. a comic book oh, yeah. where like There's the a, time is running out. There is a definitive time. Yes. There is a conflict. Have. Yes, because if they fulfill their scheme, they win. So yeah. you, 
they're and they're adding threat to that every turn, no matter what you do. And it, the game is generally rather restrictive. Like you can usually do more damage than take mm -hmm. away theme. I mean, uh, threats yeah. from the scheme. So like that threat level keeps building and building as the game goes on, sort of like a film, and it has, like, it has like acts. And, and, it's, and the villain gets stronger and stronger mm -hmm. as they get yep. beat up and they come back stronger. At a simple base level, like, if that was the first thing they started off on, is like, well, they got to have a scheme, and they, uh -huh. and they also, you, you have to be able to fight them to defeat them, not kill yeah. them, but to defeat them. Like, they nailed those two yeah, parts, just the a, essence of, you know, like, of comic books. To use the example that you will have seen in our gameplay video, not, yeah. although we've played this number of other times yes like playing as tony stark and you know you see tony stark you know you be just basic tony stark yeah flip him over he's iron man mm -hmm. but you know adding you know like the rocket boots and other upgrades like the the i don't know what the chest thing is called but you know the, the different components of his suit yeah so the way you just grow i don't know it just feels like it's very it just feels like you're telling a story sort of like him especially because like because you are, it's pieces of a suit. Yeah. Sort of a similar thing with Black Panther. Black Panther does something similar I just don't well. think it works as well with his character. It's, it's a little bit, well, Black Panther is mechanically kind of different. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. But, but the I, idea of, like, your upgrade, your upgrades yeah. or pieces of your suit, I like, yeah. I think it works really well with Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. And I think the identity cards are fantastic. I think they're one of the best parts of the game. Yeah. The, the two double-sided hero and alter ego cards. Yeah. The, the the different ways they work, the ways you can manipulate the game using them. Like yep. you, you can use one, flip it over on the same turn, use it again. You can exhaust it. If it allows you to, there are yeah, some. I mean, there are, yeah, exactly. exactly. You can you can get so much utilization. And, out and of the them. different abilities they have, the different the way that your hand size changes depending on what it's like. Again, with Tony Stark, you know, you, you, initially as Iron Man, you make a hand size of one. Yep. But each upgrade you get increases it because you know. The, the more built up he is, the better, the more he can do. Yeah, you know, it, it's just there's a, a lot. That also makes it. sense because he doesn't have a lot going on as a character outside of his suit. Ouch. You know, yeah, so he's like, a guy with a heart problem. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> so yes, yeah. So again, again, in terms of like theme immersion, great. A plus. Gameplay. A plus doesn't exist apparently in your scale, but it might. <laughs> I don't know. Gameplay. Yeah. As far as how that game actually plays, though. Um, so I think this game kind of lives and dies depending... I mean, there's, there are times where I think this game is extremely well-balanced. There are times where I think this game is a mess in terms of balance. Yeah. Like, the luck can swing really in both directions in this game. And, and that, it, it, in it, our experience, rather wildly. Yes. Like, and polarized. Like, where it's either you have the best luck uh -huh. and you're just doing great... And it feels like you're doing great, or you're the worst. Yeah. And the complete opposite, so, where you're just uh, getting annihilated. You know, it's a card-based game. It's yeah. a deck-based game. Yes. So you're drawing cards from a at least 40-card deck, mm -hmm. up to 50 cards. The hero, the villain, rather, has their own deck as well, which you're drawing from, which is also, you know, shuffled yeah. up and random. So if you're not getting the right combination of cards, it can be real frustrating. If you do, in situations where you do get the right combination of cards, it's fantastic yep it's a great feeling yes you feel powerful you know you just mess up the enemy for a turn like you stun them or whatever lose hit points take away their threat from their scheme that's awesome it's a great feeling but if you're a situation where you're just getting pummeled with like the the worst combinations of cards the game can be pretty frustrating even on normal sometimes it feels like it's like it's not an easy game no at all no i, I agree i feel like the hard numbers on the cards, yeah. I feel like the numbers for like the attack and the thwart and the defend and the villain's attack and thwart, I feel like those numbers are all pretty sound. Like, I, uh, like at first they might seem kind of low. A lot of the numbers in this game might seem kind of low or off or just confusing. The hand size as the HP, what have you. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, as the game progresses, I feel like most of the time those prove to be, they strike a good balance. But I agree, there are some aspects like when you include like the boost that the boosting yeah that's where it starts to get throw it off a little bit especially when you're if you're playing on like expert oh man might, it's the management becomes so yeah it yeah and i think on i think on solo or like lower player counts and then on hard difficulties the luck the aspect of luck becomes so much more apparent mm -hmm. you can have sessions that could literally end if you're playing like solo in 20 minutes because you're getting your butt kicked so badly the one problem I have with games like that, or like this, where everything has to go well with card draw in order mm -hmm. for you to win, is often it makes, to me, it feels like, did I do well, or did the deck just go my you way, and no I chance. just executed it, yeah. it at, like, you know, like how I should, because yeah. the game's kind of telling me how I should when it, 
You get what I'm saying? Yeah, this it is... feels like it's out of your hands. Like you, when you lose, you're like, I I had no control over that. And then sometimes when you win, it's like you feel like, well, mm -hmm. of course I won. Like everything went perfectly. Yeah. Eh. I've had problems with games like that rely on luck like that in the past for that reason. Yeah. No, it's definitely an issue. It's, it, this is a very much your standard sort of deck builder card game. It's you know, it's not a collectible card game, but it, as far as how it plays and feels, yeah. it very much kind of is. It, it's a bit of a cliche in board game yeah. description, but this is game. This is not an elegant game. Uh, no, no, at all. Because elegant games move smoothly. Yes, and there aren't thirty minute breaks where no. you're on the board board game geek forums <laughs> and going through two separate rule books. This is kind of a learn to play, but there are still yeah. rules in here you're going to need to reference, and then the rules reference, which is which, just as long. But I mean, just you know, like all, with all these games, there's tons of terminology, yep. tons of rules that inter interact with each other in different ways. Yes, rules that are similar but slightly distinct in one way or another. Uh -huh. There's a ton to learn, a ton to keep track of. Yep. Um, and if you're the sort of person who just does not tolerate that, this is not the game for you. Yeah. I feel like it's really important for us to verbalize something, though. We since we're playing some of our sessions on camera, mm -hmm. when we even when even when we're playing sessions off camera, those are often to prep for our sessions on camera. Yeah. So there's a certain level of obsession over minutia, over making sure that we do our best, the best job possible to get all the rules as close to right as we can. Mm -hmm. The average person who plays this game won't have those pressures put on them they'll be able to play the game and it, and and just you know if if they don't feel like looking just at the go with the right, flow yeah, yeah they can just go with the flow and play it and then as long as the game has a semblance of in in intelligibility and and, and and you know as long as there's a semblance of well i guess flow is the right word yeah you don't really care and you just play it out and if you make a mistake well no one's there to see it no one's there to criticize you yeah we have to worry about that so I guess we're kind of hyper focused on things like this, where yes. it's like like trying to get everything right and then but trying the to time, decipher everything. I don't know. Yes, you're right. You're right. People at home aren't going to have to worry about playing correctly. But as yes. for, for reviewing the game, which we're doing now, we yeah. it's important to, for us to try to get it correct as much as possible. Yes, yeah, so that we could review it accurately. Yeah, review it accurately. Um, yeah, and again, this is a, this is a game where yeah, it's just it can be a bit of a pain sometimes for sure. Also, just the actual flow of the game as well, I feel like is a little awkward, especially the villain phase. I feel like the hero phase, like the player phase, is okay. Yeah, that's not too hard to get. Um, but the villain phase, with constantly having to remember to immediately generate some threat. Yeah. Then they attack, boost or, or, while or boosting. scheme, attack and boost or scheme and boost twice yeah. or, at least, or once for each player at least. Yeah. Keep going. And then you would have an encounter card for each yes. player. Uh, and sometimes more than one encounter card yeah, for each if player. If they surge or anything mm -hmm. like that, it's just a lot to keep and track of. And then often the encounter cards are like, you, you, the enemy, yeah, exactly. The enemy surges, which means you draw another encounter card. We've had encounter sessions where we've probably gone through in a two-player game, like a few, like maybe over a dozen cards just in one. It seems like villain it phase, and that can yes, it becomes like. Mind it's not hard to. Just, it's not only difficult sometimes to just remember where you are during the phase, but it's also it can be tough to remember if you've done everything you need to do so far. Have we placed the threat for this scheme? Mm -hmm. Have we boosted for this scheme? Yeah, you know, there's just a lot. Yep. Um, I, you know, I imagine you know the more and more you play it, it's gonna smooth out a little bit of the. I mean, it has for us, but somewhat. Yeah. yeah, but even still, it's especially against like I mean like, Rhino's not so bad. No, like Claw is a different story. That guy's got a ton going on. Yeah, I would say Claw. I think you. I really do think with Claw, you need specific decks yeah. to take him down, and then like a lot of luck. Yeah. And again, something. Then that, that, and now all of a sudden, once you finally beat him, you'll you'll have that feeling in the back of your mind, like, did I earn this, uh -huh. or did the game sort of give it to me? Because I've beat, I've lost so many times to him, that I finally figured it out. Who knows. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so we talked, okay, you just mentioned the decks, uh, as far as, like, assembling the correct decks. Yeah. I do like the way the decks are assembled in this game. Yeah. Which is, you take a combination of, of the cards associated with your character, and then, uh, for, for the remaining, which is, like, 15, and the remaining 25 to 35, you can take from an aspect and yeah. basic cards. Mm -hmm. and it's just one aspect, which, I, I don't know, it, there's a neatness to it, it, it simplifies things, it keeps yep. things easier to clean up, um... Gives you a focus when you're playing as far as yeah. like how you should approach. Like you have aggression. Build. The aggression deck allows you to yeah. deal yeah, more all, damage. Yeah. Generally, they're mostly they're offensive. They're all really distinct. Uh, as you play the game, you sort of learn which villains 
are like which decks are harder to use against certain villains. So you could, in a way, you could be like, I'm going to go out of my way to challenge myself yeah. using this deck, or you could just you know play it more safe. But either way, there's I like that that there's a replayability. There's in a that. ton of yeah, variability and replayability just in this base set alone. Yes. Even with the five heroes, the four aspects, the three villains, mm -hmm. and the, the various like sort of like sub scheme stuff, you can mm -hmm. play, get a lot out of this uh, product. And there's certainly a lot more to come. Yep. I like the pay for the play mechanic a lot. Yeah, there's resources in the bottom, tiny, tiny little symbols. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, allow, it really encourages you to plan ahead and encourages like a sort of resource management, mm -hmm. uh, you know, increasing you know more, you know, more stra strategic play because your hands are limited. Usually, no more than six cards. You might have situations where you can draw more, but for the most part, you know, a really good card might cost four other cards to play. Yes, or three if you have like a double resource or something like that. Yeah. But still, it's a matter. It's a it's a risk reward. Do you want to give up most of your hand to get one good card out there, or do you want to keep a bunch to have the ability to, you know, react to stuff later on? Because a lot of like the cheaper ones, you know, you can just throw out there to like cancel an attack or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like the, those strike a good balance. I agree with you that the way you pay and all that is very smooth. Good mm -hmm. design. Um, this game has a lot of those elements where you're like, man, that's good. Like, better than I expected. Yeah. Better than a lot of cooperative card games that I've played. But... Yeah, it's easier than, actual, like, a mana system or anything yeah. like that. It's real It's real straightforward. The actual cards the themselves miss. are so hit and miss. Here's what I'll say. I find that the more they cost, the less likely I want to use them. Yeah. And then that, that doesn't mean they're bad. I just think that, like, I've looked, at, I've looked through the decks, and a lot of the ones that cost, like, four especially... Like, there are some good threes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Spider-Man's, like, roundabout kick does eight damage. That's only three. That's mm -hmm. a really good one. But some of the fours are, like, so specific in their use. I'm not saying they're useless. But I'm also... I don't think they're as powerful as paying four resources would indicate. Yeah, yeah. often I wonder be. how they derive the cost it's, for some of these I think cards. It's, to me, they feel like cards that you would play in Desperation because oh, okay. you absolutely have to. Because in very specific situations... They're extremely useful. Yeah. A good example of that would be Spider-Man's... Um, he has a... what's a, I, It's a four value where he basically can dodge an attack and then stun an enemy. Yeah. And it's only one-time use. Um, and you're thinking, oh, that sounds great. Well, it is great. Because being able to dodge an attack and stun at the same time is insanely powerful. But since it only happens once, mm -hmm. to give up four of your... Potentially four cards to pay for it... I don't know. Sometimes it's like it's one of those things where it's it's more specific than powerful. You yeah. just have to be in the right situation. There are cards that feel kind of like fodder, like they're just there to pay for other cards. Yeah, I think a lot of the basic cards kind of fall into that trap. A lot of them feel kind of useless or like overpriced. Avenger like, Mansion. Avengers Mansion. I like. I had never used it once. Or Helicarrier. I'm actually looking at Avengers Mansion right now. I mean, you get it's you four get to draw one extra card. You get to you get to keep it in play, and you exhaust it to, and then a player can draw a card. Yeah. It, uh, has, it has use in yeah. utilization. If you get that out, like, early, early you can see that getting, yes. being useful throughout the game, but, like, even Later if in you the game, do, it's like you can't there's often going to be something better that's a little bit cheaper that you're like, you know, I'll just do this instead. Yeah. Like, there's so many cards in this game that I just can't see people actually using for the most part. Like, there are, like, 40 feels, like, too much. Like, there are, I would, if, in an actual deck, like, if I were just taking cards I want to use, it'd probably be more like, 25. So, D, why don't we talk yeah. about other things? All right, so a couple of things I want to talk about. Um... So as we, as we know, this game currently is only PVE. I don't know if the game can survive like that for like in its current form at least forever. I think this game would need at least a, like a campaign sort of mode. I wouldn't be surprised if it's I would. It, it's almost necessary. I also think I think a PvP would be good. Just I don't know. I could see it getting stale fighting the same villains every time. Yeah, uh, I think some people would like a chance to play as the villains, or too. even that. Yeah, like a system like that, I think would be smart. But I, I, I get, this game is kind of live or die based on how it's supported. Yeah, because uh, I, I think you know people are gonna. People already do really like this game. I think it's not going to change. I think there's a lot of hype. It's definitely worth picking up, uh, given the likely trajectory of it. The, the components reflect uh, how much this game, like, how much they plan on iterating and adding to it. Yes. I mean, look at the box insert. Yeah. Like, it, it's clearly, like, it, it actually has the slots in so you could put, like, dividers in for yeah. the future card decks and everything. You do that now already, honestly. Yeah, but, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have. It's, we haven't because we want to save the room. But the components are all great. Yeah. The, you know, it's a bit of a layup, right? It's Marvel. You've got such a, an established, like, look mm -hmm. to go for. But they nail it still. You know, all the components, yeah. the counters, and the 
tokens and everything. You know, the colors it's, are great. The, it's the build quality you would expect from yeah. Fantasy Flight games, and then by that Assembling I mean... Assembling these pretty much made my thumbs bleed, but, like, yeah. you know, once you get them together, you don't have to take them apart again. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, it it's, it's good. Yeah. It's not maybe not, it's maybe not going to be, like, Days of Wonder. There's no, like, wooden components, no, no, but, but like, it's it pretty good. It gets the look of Marvel and, down yeah. to a T. You know, the card art is all, you know, I'm sure straight from the comics, probably. It's all... Yeah. Great. Um... I think we should go to final thoughts, Dee. Okay. I mean, our thoughts, we've, we've given a lot of thoughts. I'm not really sure there's much else we need to say. We have. Uh, yeah. Besides, you know, just giving it scores and whatnot. Yeah, again, this is a game that does a lot right. It does a lot that personally isn't to my taste either. You know, it's, yeah. it's fiddly. Yeah, it's fiddly. Um, but it's also cool. <laughs> and when it works, it's, it's really fun. I'm, I'm going to give it four stars out of five. And this is a game that, you know, this is just the product here this yeah. is a game that could go up in the future easily i think especially if they straighten some things out just clarify some things for you know every time we play it there's still something like you we just can't quite figure out everything mm -hmm. and i know there are a lot of people who are going to watch this and be like what idiots i have it all that's down dumb uh but you know here's 600 the last time i was on board game geek on the forum uh -huh. there were approximately and there's probably more than 600 now threads majority of which were about people asking questions um and this game's only been out for three weeks baby yeah two or three weeks newer that's a lot i think that's the most i've ever seen or it's up there um and so that shows that it goes to show that maybe d and i are not alone in thinking that this game is fiddly I mean, we play a lot of games we're, i mean we're not like professionals or anything like that you know no. but we you know we're pretty good by now at, you know learning how to play games, games and yeah interpreting rules and what have you and yeah Again, I think if you, if you don't if you don't make much of a fuss about the rules and you just play it to have fun, it's not going to be a problem. But for me, I'm in that I was like as someone who edits the videos for our channel, it's mm -hmm. like I just there's a lot of pressure to get it right and and I think that's affecting my opinion of the game. Uh, and that's really my only criticism is that I just want to know how to play it 100% properly and be certain about it, yeah. which is why I hope that Fantasy Flight does put out like an official FAQ or something that answers almost all these questions people have. And until they do that, I can only give this game a B. But I do think this could go up into the A level with expansions and, like I said, if some rule clarifications, and we're good to go. Because mm -hmm. I really enjoy it, and I have a lot of fun uh, taking on the role of a lot of these yeah, heroes in the game. Yeah, again, it's just like the thought of, you know, putting this away for a couple months, coming back to it, and then having to re-familiarize ourselves with all the stuff we weren't sure of in the first time. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that just kind of, like, might be a bridge too far. It's Sometimes. a little intimidating. Yeah. But good. the good thing is I do want to play this more. Like, I, I'm not done with it at all. We've yeah. played this a good amount, but I'm still... Maybe Graham will I'm play I'm still it. keen. And then, you know, when Graham's back, which should be soon, like really soon. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was at least somewhat informative to anyone who hasn't played the game yet. Yeah. If you have played the game and you have your own thoughts on it, you have your own opinions, if you think we're idiots, if you think we're just wrong, let us know. We're glad to hear. No, yeah, we, we welcome it. We welcome it, sure. Uh, Criticism is always good. You learn from it. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you can give it a thumbs up uh, on the ch channel here. We always appreciate that. You can subscribe to the channel every for more videos like this every week. Every Wednesday and Friday, we put out new videos. Every uh, day. No, no. <laughs> no. You can come back Friday. I don't know where we're playing, but we are playing something on this channel. I think. Maybe. There will, there will be a video on Friday. We just don't know which one because our schedule has been... It's holiday season. Yeah. It gets crazy. Yeah. Thank you for watching, everyone. Did you do the outro? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, did you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Not, I'm really Where are you? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Cloud 9. Well, until next time, thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye. See ya.